Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. A lot of people talk about Ukraine joining NATO. A lot of people ask, oh my god, what's gonna happen if they join NATO? Well, I think that's a long way for Ukraine to join NATO from um, uh, many reasons. And the main reason, obviously, it doesn't meet the requirements, the minimum requirements for an application to NATO. So they applied uh, to uh, be, to join NATO, but it's like, um, I don't know, you have a felony conviction in the United States and you apply for a gun permit. I mean, from the very beginning, you will not receive a gun uh, if you have a felony. So, but nevertheless, they did. Why? Because uh, we know how um, this world is run. This article comes from Republic World and it is from uh, October 6th, 2022. Ukraine can't be part of NATO as it is engaged in conflict with Russia, EU Commissioner states. EU Commissioner Breton labeled Ukraine's conflict with Russia as a, quoting, disqualifying factor for Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky's NATO application. That should be, as I said, a full disqualifier. But we know that things here and laws and regulations, policies, standards could be banned according to the circumstances, according to the person that uh, we're talking about or the entity. So Ukraine's NATO bid and its official membership into Western military alliance might not be successful for as long as it engaged in armed conflict and hostilities with Russia, EU Commissioner Thierry Breton said during an interview with French TV channel BFM on Thursday. He labeled the conflict with Russia as a disqualifying factor for Ukraine's presence of application, NATO application. I mean, that's like uh, basic, as I said. He's gonna get married, yeah, but he's dead. So how is he gonna get married? I don't know, posthumously. So EU Commissioner Thierry Breton argued that to apply for NATO membership, you must not be a country at war. He furthermore stressed that NATO accessions are made when the countries are at peace. This is because the entire alliance would be dragged, that's exactly what they want, into the conflict otherwise. He noted that as Ukraine is a country at war, its NATO membership is a symbolic political demand, Breton argued. Uh, that's one thing. So this is like, it's impossible, you're already dead, how can you get married, you know what I mean? Now, um, the other example could be the person is in a coma. You don't even know if that person will be able, so again, it's disqualified. You can't ask for consent, you know, like uh, uh, consent, I'm sorry. Uh, person in coma, hey, you want to get married? You can't, he's not going to answer. He's not going to give you the consent to get married. So the second, um, uh, the, the second uh, issue that uh, prevents Ukraine from even applying is a country that wants to apply has to provide NATO with, um, with documents stating that um, the country has no territorial disputes with any of its neighbors. Uh, because that's the same. I just use NATO to get into NATO and then create a situation where I want the territories, he wants the territories, and then we get in a war and I drag the entire NATO in it. That was the whole thing with this one, as a defensive alliance, blah, blah, blah. You know how that worked in uh, 1999 in uh, Serbia. Nobody attacked NATO, but NATO bombed Serbia. And the same in, uh, if you want to know the um, Libya, the same way. <laughs> NATO bombarded and attacked and it was involved, involved in Syria, in Syria, in um, Libya, without even being attacked. So, uh, you know, things could, could change. So, in this case, Ukraine cannot provide, you know, these documents uh, between, let's say, Russia and Ukraine, stating that they are, there are no territorial, uh, you know, disputes, because they are. And there are disputes with everybody else, if you ask me. Uh, because uh, as history uh, documented, Ukraine was awarded, given 
certain territories that are and were part of other were part of other countries neighbors like for instance Poland has some territorial demands uh, Romania should have it Romania is a weasel country so it won't because it, it uh, gave up its uh, territories like northern Bukovina and part of Moldova now is in Ukraine since 1940 when uh, Stalin issued an ultim ultimatum to Romania and Romania said yeah 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 take that, 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 that yeah yeah okay they're good and instead of bringing it back after 1991 they remained in guess what country ukraine uh, ukraine had crimea given by khrushchev in 54 right from where not from uh, ukraine it was given to ukraine from a different uh, republic wasn't it which was from that territory never a ukrainian territory then he was look at for instance western ukraine we got the poles the friendly poles just waiting to grab that part of the country then you have Hungary so you see that everybody wants something over there so how is Ukraine going to okay I understand it's gonna be okay with um, those countries but what about Russia unless they make a special provision that Russia should not be included but I, I think it's stupid but they hope that by that time the Russian government will be all hanged and then uh, weasels will lead Russia into uh, being again the 1991-1999 whore of the Western countries. And they can rape her and use her and abuse her at will. And uh, we have here, uh, continue with this article, and I'm quoting, de facto, we have already made our way to NATO, Zelensky says. Um, yeah, in, in a way, you, you, are, uh, you, are you are telling the truth. Um, and he says, we have already proven compatibility with alliance standards. They are real for Ukraine, real on the battlefield and in all aspects of our interaction, said Ukrainian president in his video address. We trust each other, we help each other and we protect each other. This is the alliance, de facto. Today, Ukraine is applying to make it de jure. Well, this is how a, how a um, deluded delusional person talk talks but it can because he has to because he's got the masters who are gonna ban this and that i don't know if it happened if it ever happened to you in your life when let's say you um, you are supposed to um, I don't know, go to a competition or uh, get a job or you know get promoted or uh, do complete a task and when there were some rules obviously and uh, you realize that the rules were bent for you or for someone else and you wonder how because there were rules there were laws there were policies well the same here uh he knows better that uh rules will be bent at will because it's just a pretense the best example is look at how much these guys uh united states I'll give you the example are barking at uh russia for you know violating Ukraine's territorial integrity and independence and sovereignty, that's the word, sovereignty. When at this point, United States does, does the exact thing in Syria. So, and more than that, takes the oil of Syrian people, of the country, sucks the oil out with the help of its military who is protecting it. So, you know, things and then I didn't see anything at United Nations everybody voting and saying hey we condemn this why not and why not because that's the way things are thanks you thank you very much for being with me again today stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just